Hey everybody, Mount Doom Mania here. Welcome back to Evil Under the Sun. When we left off last time, we got finagled into playing some darts in order to win that boat buoy, that life ring, hanging... A, a regulation dart. Yeah. Fancy a game, sir? Care to make a gentleman's wager? I reckon so. I will play you for that life ring buoy on your wall. Oh, very well. But it's worth ten quid. Is it a bet? It is. Ten pounds for a boy? That's highway robbery. <laughs> Only if he wins, Hastings. Mm -hmm. Ten quid against the boy. You throw first. All right, Perot. Well played, Poirot. Okay. <laughs> Well, see, I don't understand the scoring. I don't understand. Uh, if anybody knows what this means, the scoring, please, please let me know. Uh, I'm assuming that, of course, the first person to zero wins. So is this that number? And then you get what? That's three darts. That's three darts. That's three darts. And that's three darts. And do you have to get it perfectly? Please, somebody, if you know, let me know. All right. Well, we got us a, a watch him a flipper. Okay. All right. So we got a a buoy, a buoy, a, a life ring, a life raft. I have obtained their life ring buoy. Buoy. So that's mighty nice of you, Poirot. Anything I could do for you in return? <laughs> yeah. Um. Hmm. All right. What do I need the most? Probably the compass. I haven't made it to those caves yet. Well, I guess I could let you use my compass. Not much use for it sailing around leather come by. Mind you, return it though. I will. I will. Does he have a handle I can borrow? Do you have the winch handle I might borrow? Winch handle? From my sailboat? Not bloody lightly. How would all my sails up and down? If oh. you'll excuse me, Poirot, I have okay. some business to attend to. Don't worry, I'll be around the hotel if you need me. Poirot, do you think a woman could have strangled Alena? In 1926 was the first woman to swim the English Channel. Uh-huh. I believe she could strangle you with ease, especially if you asked such a nonsensical question. <laughs> then we should put all the women on the island to the test. Somehow. Yeah, but how? Very well. Yeah, but no, see, now, Perot's right about that. Just because there's women involved and, the, and they keep saying, oh, well, you need a strong arm, huh? -uh. Do not for one second rule out because you think somebody's weak or too small, uh, too short. No, 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 no. That's a big mistake. Do not assume anything. That can, you can get yourself in trouble. Do not, do not, do not. All right. Well, Weston. All right. Any indications yet in Elena Marshall's murder? It's a indications, yes. But there is still work to sure be done. Sure is. Of course, of course. How can I help? Oh, good lord. Has the body been moved from Cutter's Cove? Yes. Doctor Neesden is performing the autopsy right now in Kingsbridge. Okay. Did your men uncover anything new from the murder scene? No, nothing, I'm afraid. I was pretty thorough. Have you an answer from Scotland Yard on the sketch? Yes, goes by the name of John North. Here's the report. I will copy the important points into my notebook. J.N.? Nasty bit of goods there. Hate to hear he's in my district. Hmm. Oh, I gotta... Okay. Have you the report on the Alice Corrigan case? Here you are. As I said, it wasn't my district. Chief Constable in charge did all he could. Eventually he turned it over to Scotland Yard. They have a couple of men on it, I believe. Mm. Merci beaucoup. I will make the notes of my own. Mm. The husband's alibi looks unbreakable. And there are no other real suspects. Yeah. Mm. Do you have the background checks on the suspects? Not yet, I'm afraid. Oh. Mrs. Castle is very nervous. She may attempt the escape. We're ready to follow if she does. Good, good. 
I have here the letter, written to Alena, signed only J.N. Do you think you could have Scotland Yard ask among her acquaintances in London if they can identify this man? Yeah, J.N. It's not much to go on. Do you have anything else? This photograph of the red funds was taken by a Jimmy Nash, as you can see from the reverse side. Uh-huh. Ah, uh, yes. I will ask Monsieur Redfern if he knows Monsieur Nash, but please send it along to Scotland Yard as well. It may help. Of course. Hmm. Did Monsieur Blatt report to you that his boat had been fired upon? I'll say not. When was this? That I cannot tell you. He mentions an accident in the storm only. Yeah, what gunshot storm? ain't no... We've had fair weather for weeks now. Oh! Then why would he conceal such an attack? I could bring him in for questioning. Not just yet, please. Again, I would advise only to watch his movements should he leave Seadrift Island. I'll inform my men. Good day, monsieur. Hmm. Okay. Sailing. Yeah, but he can go anywhere at any time. That's... Alright, so here's the report on... Let's see. Jasper Allen North... North has a long and varied criminal history, beginning with loitering in the tent and car theft, age 14. From there, he graduated to driving for a criminal gang based in Whitechapel. Uh, taking turn 21, suspicion of driving a car in the Carberry Bank robbery. Released. Suspected of being the driver in 23 Wilson Armored Car Job. No charges filed. Arrested since then on various charges ranging from smuggling. To smuggling to assault and battery. London's drug rings. Oh, interesting. Victim Allen, who is there to resident of Swans. Victim's body was discovered by a young woman hiker, Elizabeth Stride, in a small wooded area approximately a half mile south of the Swans train station, 1115. It was later determined she had been strangled with a pair of powerful hands Corners jury returned in a verdict of murder by person or persons unknown. Stride, a school teacher from Bath, was able to set the time of discovery by the St. Bartholomew's church bell, marking the quarter hour. The victim's husband, Edward Corrigan, informed police that expected to be met by his wife when he arrived on the 11:30. From London, she often crossed through the woods on her way from their cottage into town. I had a possible motive. He inherited close to 5,000, I'm assuming pounds, on the death of his wife. According to Alibi Heber, is ironclad. He was definitely placed by both a conductor, Peter Michaels, and another passenger, Arthur Gimble, a member of the town council, on board the train at the time of the murder. The train arrived in... I can't really read that. To tomes? I can't uh, schedule them. 30. Due to similarities between this crime and the murder in Brixham, a 15 year old schoolgirl, um, Millie Parsons, on 13 April, an attempt to link the two victims is made without success. To date, no arrests have been made, and there are no suspicious suspects. Hmm. I read all the documents. I've looked at everybody. Hmm. The information you requested should be available later in the day. Okay. Alright. I guess that means we can head back to the the mainland. I run errands for the hotel guests when I can. Uh -huh. I'll fetch things from Kingsbridge that they can't find at the chemist here in Leathercombe Bay. I've got my own motorboat and can take guests fishing too. Though with U boats around these days, nobody wants to do much fishing. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Hmm. Alright, so the big problem, I, I definitely agree with Perot, though. We cannot rule out women for strangling. I mean, even though it would, you would think that a woman's hands would be weaker than a man's. How are we going to... How are we going to test them? Hmm. Alright. 
Where does, I don't even know where to start with this one. Oh, is she still here? Mademoiselle, there is a favor you could do for Poirot. Would you be willing to help with an experiment? What kind of experiment? Oh, would you be so kind as to open the Japanese? Ah, ha, ha. ah, I see you mean to prove your theory that no woman would have the strength to strangle Madame Marshall. Can't do it, sir. It's on there ever so tight. Would you mind asking one of the ladies at the hotel to open it? Why a lady? Surely any of the sturdier gents could do it. Well, Hastings, this is your plan. What do you say to that? Tell her... Tell her you have a phobia about other men opening jars. <laughs> what? Oh, that is absurd. She will think Poirot is a lunatic. <laughs> if you won't do it, I win my point. No woman could have throttled Arlena Marshall. <sighs> Mademoiselle Gladys, I... Uh, that is to say, I have the tiniest of phobias about other men opening <laughs> jars for me. As unbelievable as that sounds. Oh, no, sir. I believe it. Coming from you... Well... I'll give it a go. Who shall I have tried? Um... I don't know. Uh... uh Mademoiselle Brewster. Brewster. Sure, why not? Maybe if I go... If I went out and back in, that will be enough to... Maybe that'll be enough to trigger it. Because I left the building. Uh, let's see. Alright, Gladys. There you are, sir. I thought you'd forgotten about no. me. No. When you didn't return, I decided I would test every woman in the hotel for you, just to be sure. I hope I didn't take too much on myself. Thank you very much, Mademoiselle no, Gladys. that's... What did you find? I gave it to every woman on the island to try. And not one of them could budge it. That is, until I gave it to Miss Brewster. She popped it right open. Gosh, she's strong. Merci beaucoup, mademoiselle. You have done an excellent job. Really? What can I do with the jar? It is yours. Take it as well with the sincere thanks of Hercule Poirot. Phobias must be a heavy burden to bear. You have no idea. You have no idea. Wow. Okay. Abby and Hastings, we progress most satisfactorily. The course now is to identify and to remove the red herrings that obscure our true path. Where have our investigations taken us? I will remind you of those moments I considered the most important. Okay. You, of course, must decide which pertain to the murder of Elena Stewart, which are additional crimes that while they may have no bearing on the murder, must still be solved, and what we still must learn before all questions are answered and the guilty unmasked. Are you ready, mon ami? As ready as I'll ever be, I suppose. But could I have my sixth clue to the yeah, secret of the finger of the suspicion clue, man. first? But of course, the sixth clue is telephone. Telephone. Let's see what we have so far, then. Power, lamp, desk, Draw, magnet, and now telephone. Yeah, but he Thank said the telephone Barrow. was out. I'm ready to hear what you consider important about what we've learned so far. First, what are the mysteries we are trying to unravel? Oh my god, uh... Bullets, Bullets yeah. Mr. Blatt. Yeah. Yes, Monsieur Blatt is shot at, but fails to mention the fact. Shot at by whom? Yeah. A German U-boat? Possibly. If it were the authorities, I, don't know. I am sure Colonel Weston would have been informed. Yet he did not find the incident of sufficient interest to tell anyone. He even makes up the transparent lie of storm damage. True. Why? Yeah. There, Mr. The bird watcher, Mr. North. Uh-huh. Yes, the report from Scotland Yard, which I hope you have read. It tells us he is the smuggler. Uh-huh. But of what? Is he allied with the Fifth Communists? Or someone else? Hmm. Yeah, we got the, the ghost. ghost of Tom Cutter. Yes. The ghost who is not the ghost. 
Do you have any theories as to who that ghost might be? Oh, man. I think it's Mr. North. Mr. North. He would certainly seem to be the most likely candidate. Yeah. I think. Alright, uh, he's up to something. Voodoo on Sea Drift Island. Uh huh. Yes. And we have the indications it is being practiced here and by young Mrs. Musher. Yeah. I don't know, though. The activities of fifth columnists. Yes, it seems clear that Mrs. Castle watches, but not in the name of England. Yeah. The murder of Alice Corrigan. We know little of the details of this case. Only that the husband was implicated and cleared due to the unbreakable alibi. And this crime was committed near Brixham as well. It may yet prove to be connected to the Mille Parsons case. I thought the police proved that Fell couldn't have been the killer. There may be another connection, Hastings. Do not rule it out. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, you can't rule out anything. It has a way of coming back and biting you in the butt. The murder of Millie Parsons. We now know enough of their circumstances in the crime to point towards a killer with motive and opportunity. Yep. The anthropology instructor, Gideon Fell. And unless Mr. Fell is on Seadrift Island or in Leathercombe Bay in disguise, he is not a suspect in Arlena Marshall's murder. Yet there were several persons who were either intimately or peripherally involved in the case on Seadrift Island. True. And two points remain to be cleared up. Can you name them? Well, they're right here. Is Linda Marshall involved in voodoo? The signs <sighs> seem to point know. in that direction, Man. I am afraid. Once we hear from Miss Porter, and learn what Mademoiselle Marshall hides in her puzzle box, we will have our final answers. Yeah, I forgot about that. Was Gideon that. Fell yeah. the man you mentioned in your story of voodoo? The one who awakens in the night in the greatest of fear? Yes, it was he. Because of voodoo? Is it so hard to accept? If you accept that he himself believed in the power of voodoo? The murder of Arlena Marshall. Of primary importance. We will explore the possible suspects presently, but let us take a moment for motive. What are your thoughts on the reason Elena Marshall was murdered? Well, I mean, obviously jealousy. Jealousy. More than one person would have reason uh -huh. to object to her attentions to Monsieur Redfern. Yes. Yep. All of these mysteries still be us to greater or lesser degree. Now I will list the characters in our little drama. Do you believe okay, that we can well. eliminate anyone from any of the mysteries we pursue? I know we can, Colonel Weston, surely. I think all these people can be... Yeah. All of the above. Excellent. Yeah. With one stroke, you clear the stage of the... Uh, how you call them, uh, the players of the bits? The bit player, now yeah. Now we can focus on the true suspects. Yeah, I don't now think the staff had anything to do with it. Now let us turn our attention to the more likely suspects. Which is your choice as murderer? Oh, God. Uh, Man, I don't know. Ugh. Dang it. I'm going to be honest with you. I think that it's Rosamund Darnley. Because when he stood there and said that he would not divorce her till death do you part. Oh, man. Christina, I just she might want her dead, but I don't think she would actually have the balls to kill her. I don't see why Major Barry would. He had the hots for everybody. Carrie Gardner, I mean, man, she walked out with her money and everything. But I tell you what, she really does control her husband. Would he do it for her? Blatt, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if Castle would. I don't know. Linda Marshall, I... I think she's just a confused girl. 
Up Rosamond on. Darnley. The murder of empathy. To protect the man she truly loves. She is a strong woman who has succeeded in the business world. It is possible she would be capable of such an act. Yeah. That would be my first guess. You guys go ahead and make a guess while we're going through these. Patrick Redfern. Again, an obsession that Arlena Marshall has decided to end? The lover spurned? Yet where is the opportunity? His movements are witnessed by many, including myself, until he set off in the robot with Mademoiselle Brewster. Okay, what about Emily? Emily Brewster. The athletic Mademoiselle Brewster is a woman strong enough to strangle another as your experiment proved? And we have not determined a sufficient alibi for her, I think. And yet, she is another like Monsieur Black, par example, who apparently has no motive for the crime at all. Uh, what's removed? <sighs> oh, man. Well, Linda, Linda Marshall. Linda hated Again, her. empathy to protect him from the woman who makes him the cuckold in the eyes of all the world? Yep. Already she is attracted by the unhealthy interests. Already she knows the violence that can strike without warning. Yet she would seem to have the unimpeachable alibi thanks to Madame Redfern. Maybe they alibied each other. I don't think o Oakley could have done it, Oakley but it, Gardner. he was put up to the it. likable Mr. Gardner, who takes so long to find the knitting wool and who was ruined uh -huh. by Arlena Marshall. Yeah, even he admitted it took him longer than ten minutes to get that wool. Carrie Gardner. Another who is hiding something? Would she strike down the woman who <laughs> sure ruined would. her husband's business? Sure she would. In a heartbeat. Christine Redfern. On the face of it, the most likely suspect? The jealousy for her is the most immediate and intense. I don't think so. Yet she too would seem to have the unimpeachable alibi, according to Mademoiselle Marshall. <sighs> nah. Kenneth Marshall. The jealous husband? Uh -uh. Even the cool customer nah, like Captain Marshall so. may have the fires that burn deep inside. He pretty and much... the money motive, too. Well, yes. 50,000? Was it 50,000? The background check of Scotland Yard should reveal if he has the reverses in business. Yeah, we'll find out about his money Stephen soon Lane. enough. A man so consumed by his zealotry, he has lost his position as a minister of God? The religious fanatic is indeed a man who could be driven to take uh -uh. it upon himself to personally destroy the evil he sees. I don't know, Bob. Hillary nah. Castle. Arlena could have figured out that she was betraying her country. No, nah, that had nothing to do with Self-preservation. I did not see among her many attractive qualities any indication that Mrs. Marshall possessed the instincts of a detective. Still, it is a possibility. <sighs> Horace Blatt. It is true the man has secrets. He would also have had the opportunity to slip yeah. quietly ashore at Cutter's Cove Several and depart times. in his sailboat during the time of the murder. Yeah, Major but Barry. What's his motive? Or Major Barry, a man who has lived through the violence of war, an obsession rebuffed by Madame Marshall, may indeed have turned to no, more violence. I don't think so. He'd just find Voila. another woman. There we have it then. Barring new evidence against any of those we have eliminated, there are 12 suspects. Some would seem to have no motive, others no opportunity. But at this stage, we must keep our minds open yeah, to all absolutely. possibilities. You agree? Yeah. Um, absolutely. Yeah. Then when you are ready, we will return to Sea Drift Island. It is late in the afternoon. In only hours, the truth will reveal itself and a killer will face the ultimate court. Oh. Oh my god, guys, we're getting so close. Okay, yeah, I don't think any of the staff had anything to do with it. Um, they're just too... I don't... Don't take this the wrong way. When I, they're too simple. They're too just down-to-earth, sweet, normal, simple people living their lives, trying to do a good job. I don't think that anybody had anything to do with it. Yeah, it's one of those 12. Uh, do not rule out a woman, though. Um... And if somebody come and tested me for a jar, if I've already choked somebody to death, you can believe that I'm going to be... You know what? Maybe I need to fake opening this jar. You know what I'm saying? It was that simple. 
All right, so next time when we come back, we will go back to Sea Drift Island, and we will continue. I mean, we've got to, we got to dig in. We got to dig in. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know what's. I'm. I'm. I know. I. I. I really think that it was Rosa. Uh, when he said, till death do us part, you know, you just see the wheels turn. It's like, is that right? You know? But we'll see. It's It's been like nine years since I played this, guys. So, honestly, I can't even remember. So, until next time, this is Evil Under the Sun. I love a good mystery murder who done it. And if you look around YouTube long enough, you can find some of these movies. Uh, some of the Hercule Poirot, Agatha Christie. If you love a good mystery who done it, also check out my channel. I have played a couple of games, uh, Murder on the Orient Express, uh, and then there were none. I have done a couple of them, so check those out too. All right. So till next time, I'm so out of here. Later, guys. <laughs>